Hey everyone, so I'm back from the dead. Not so cute and compact as ever. Um, but actually it's only been like two days. So this is going to be my Glee Season 3 Episode 15 brother, <laughs> Big Brother Recap. Um, Quinn is back in a wheelchair. Dun dun dun! But she's happy. Happier than she's ever been. Her and Artie are the cutest fucking people I've ever seen in my life. Like, they're just so adorable. Um, I just love that she's so happy and she thinks it's like... You know, a, a good thing just to live life how it is. And I'm Still Standing was seriously the most perfect thing I've ever seen. I was literally screaming, they are so cute and perfect! <sighs> I just love their voices together. Like, Cordy is in my heart. Um, friendship or couple, I don't really care. I just want more screen time with them. I think that they work very well together. I think Kevin and Diana just have a great dynamic and chemistry. Um... The texting, texting was the stupidest thing that Quinn has ever done besides sleeping with Puck. <laughs> this episode had a lot of great quotes, especially from Cooper, so I'll be quoting a lot of things. And no crying, Tina. No crying for me, Asian Tina. <laughs> Don't cry for me, Asian Tina. Sue's, Sue is upset because Coach Roz Washington has now made co-coach at the Cheerios. Sue promises Figgins if she can get the new directions to win nationals, she gets to be the only coach for the Cheerios. Oh, it's on, and that means she's coaching booty camp. And Sue throws a Mercedes phone. <laughs> I literally scream. She's like, who are you texting? It sounds like my mom. <laughs> uh, I'm just donating to the Obama campaign. Yeah, right, bitch. Um... Sue has to go find out the sex of her baby and Emma and Will go with her to support her as her friends. I'm talking about all this Sue stuff because early on, because I really, it's not that, you know, big of a deal to me. Um, but we find out Sue is having a girl, but her daughter might have problems, maybe such as Downs, she said, or irregular, abnormalities, irregularities, whatever. Um, also touching moment with Becky and Sue because maybe she realized she might have a child that's just like Becky and her sister Jean, so that was a little bit... A little sad. Um, Kurt finally gets to meet the famous Cooper Anderson. And um, I like that Cooper is cool with Blaine being gay. Uh, they sort of just hinted at it because based on him saying, oh, is that your boyfriend? And Blaine's just there saying, you know, stand there proudly. Yes, it is. Um, Freecreditreport.com slash savings. <laughs> Good lord, that's so cheesy. Kurt flips his shit as well as Sue. Will you sign my breast? Um, and quote from Kurt, Blaine, your brother is the best looking man in North America. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, when Blaine, he quotes, yeah, that's why I never talk about my brother. Insert said Blaine. Oh my God. I just feel like so bad for Blaine. Cause he was that little, he's like, that's why I never mentioned my brother. Like, you know, like, oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> um, new directions. Think of what they should do for seniors ditch day. But here we call it senior skip day. When I was a senior, it was senior skip day. I think that sounds better. I just, so it sounded weird to me. They decide to go to Six Flags, but Rachel can't get over the fact that she thinks it's her fault for Quinn's accident. And I think that was a cute, touching for Barry moment. Um, because it, it kind of brought you back into the storyline. Like, continuity. Like, what the hell... Quinn's back in a wheelchair and it's like no one's talking about it but Rachel finally brings it up and she feels so terrible about it and but it's good to see Rachel's actually caring for other people besides herself so <laughs> I think that's something um Puck suggests him and Finn move to California after graduation to expand pools pool, <laughs> Puck's pool cleaning business um but Finn is conflicted with going to New York with Rachel and I'll discuss that at the end um, Sue has Cooper come into the choir room to sealed, sealed with a kiss, and everyone flips their shit again. Blaine and Cooper had little shows as kids, and they must relive it. Uh, I just remember me and my sister used to have put on little shows, too, so I just see it's a cute little sibling thing, you know. Um, you know, da da da. Uh, which means it's time for Kurt, Kurt, <laughs> Blaine and Cooper to put on a good show, and they must, because they're just both so handsome and good. Um, so, they do Rio Hungry Like a Wolf mashup, Duran Duran, and Blaine in those pants, that ass, bless everything, just, just gotta say. Also, when Cooper <laughs> pushes Blaine out of the way in the center of the stage, he's like, move, bitch. <laughs> That's so fucking hard. Okay. 
uh, Cooper only compliments himself and puts Blaine down, and Blaine doesn't appreciate it. He doesn't... Um, also, when they're at the restaurant, he's like, I didn't have a theme for my dancing. I'm just dancing. <laughs> doesn't need a theme. Um, and even with Blaine, and when they were dancing to Hanson, and he only... <laughs> Blaine just learned how to walk only three years ago. I think Little Blaine was cute with the bow tie and all of it. They added that. But Little Blaine looks nothing like the Blaine now. Like, he didn't have curly hair and he was like 12. Whatever, I guess. They don't really care about that, the detail. But um, it's too bad that uh, he looked nothing like But he was still cute. It's just, um, and it was good to have some backstory. But I... Uh, and little, little Kurt and Little Blaine. Okay. Also, Kurt, uh, Cooper's accents. <laughs> Top of the morning, do you? I cannot do an Irish accent. Um, more cute Cordy. Artie challen challenges um, Quinn to roll up the steep ramp. She can do anything. I believe in you, as Artie says. And it's like having a baby. Quinn says, how would you know? <laughs> They're just, like, so perfect. They really can. They just work so well together. And it's so adorable. You just want to, like, them to... Snuggle forever. Um, Cooper's master acting class. Uh, turn into a pose. Well, I can do it. Turn into a pose. Again. And again. And I can't remember the last one. <laughs> one more time. Some of he does. I don't remember. <laughs> but <laughs> everyone is still flipping their shin and even taking notes except Blaine. He's like, why the fuck are you taking notes? I'm kind of surprised that Kurt is falling for this crap, and as well as Santana, they feel like they're both kind of like, you know, realistic, they're not taking their shit, but I think Kurt's just so, you know, in love with the idea of someone who, and as well, maybe a Santana as well, but maybe it's because he has the good looks, or the fact that he got out of Lima, and that they admire that, he's, you know, made a little bit famous of himself, but maybe it's something that Kurt admires and wants to aspire to be, or, you know, at least the the uh, getting out of Lima part. Um, the key to dramatic scene is pointing. When people are really emotional, they point their fingers a lot. And Cooper gives stupid and silly advice and Blaine calls him out on it. Um, but he's wrong because he's not an internationally beloved spokesman for the internet's fastest credit score website. That's not right, Blaine. That's wrong. That's wrong. You don't even know. And the secrets to acting... To great acting is ignoring whatever the other actor is doing. No eye contact. Or screaming all my lines because I'm really intense and all the things I'm feeling are really intense. I'm gonna, because I'm a tense actor. <laughs> the Nicholas Cage quote. <laughs> is our impression, I should say. So, they try to do a scene from NCIS and Rachel points a no eye contact. And Blaine is doing it all wrong because he's not pointing. Things are serious. There's a man in a dress that's dead. And Cooper and Blaine start arguing, and Blaine wishes Cooper would just support him and not tear him down. Cooper just still doesn't care. You just want to punch him. I was, like, literally screaming at the TV going, I don't know if I want to laugh with you or punch you in the fucking face. So, I was conflicted. Um, Brittany snaps a picture of Rory and Cooper with the lens cap on still. <laughs> I noticed that, like, first I was like, of course she did, Brittany. Um, Cooper's freaking out that he'll be auditioning for some Michael Bay movie maybe Transformers 4, and Blaine doesn't really care. He also thinks <laughs> Cooper comments that Kurt picks out his Blaine's clothes. <laughs> I can imagine him doing it. like, no he doesn't. And he is tired of Cooper's crap and, every and he thinks everything's about him. So Fighter, let's get into Fighter. Let me just say, loved it. It's my favorite song in the episode, my favorite performance. I literally watched this episode a bunch of times because I love that scene. I just think it's so angsty and so well done. Angry Blaine is really arousing, let me tell you. And I said it before, I prefer the original, um, but since listening to it on repeat, I really appreciate Blaine's take on the song. I re appreciated it then, but I appreciate it a lot more now. I've it's I've been listening to it constantly before the episode, and now it's my favorite song from the episode and performance, and I just think Darren did an incredible job. I think that Christina and him have very different voices because she's a female and she can do that R&B kind of thing, but I still think he did a wonderful job, and I hate people say they ruined the song. If you think you ruined the song, get the fuck out. Just don't even, don't even fight, or at least keep your opinions to yourself. Um, 
but I feel like it's one of the first songs Blaine has sung that had real context and something people could relate to. He was sick of being in the shadows of his family and his brother and everything in life. You know, everybody, everybody always only mentions Blaine if they're gonna talk shit about him. Like, you notice, like, in the choir room, it's always about, well, Blaine, you know, he gets all the solos or Blaine this and that because he's n the new guy and blah, blah, blah. He doesn't really, you know, think that he fits in, but... You know, Blaine's tired of that shit. You know, thanks for making me stronger. Uh, thanks for making me a fighter. And him getting all pissed in the locker room and he's just singing his lungs out. And also, more Blaine boxing. That's angsty and hot. Mm, yeah. And also, Cooper is watching and seeing how much he's hurting Blaine emotionally. But I think everyone's favorite part, or at least one of my favorite parts, is the uh, wet slash shower scene. Blaine. Oof. That was like literally porn, and I was blessing Jesus, whoever, and up in the sky, anywhere. I think I died. I was literally going, oh my god. And so, bless whoever wrote the hell, wrote that scene, or that part in the scene. Oh my, slow clap for you. It's just, um, someone mentioned on Tumblr that we saw more of Blaine's skin in the episode than we did in the first time. It's really true, though. I wish that... That wasn't true, but unfortunately it is. Also, um, we need to complain. Um, we need to like write a complaint about less hair gel for Blaine. Apparently there will be some more curly haired less gel Blaine at the prom episode, so here's to hoping. Anyways, um, the scene on the stage was really emotional. I thought it was fucking wonderful. Besides the shower part, that was and the hall I love when he's like in the hallway before he goes into the locker room. He's like He's like, you know, what's that, what's that part he says, um, I can't even think of it now, but he's like, yeah, what you do about Cooper? And so, um, my favorite part in the whole song, I mean, the, the song in general is where he's singing, I am a fighter, I ain't gonna stop, there is no turning back, I've had enough. <laughs> where he's like in the background of all the, um, videos of Cooper and he's like, oh my god, he's having like a breakdown and he's just like... You know, like, I don't know, he doesn't know what to do. He's, like, he's just, like, heartbroken. And I think this song is definitely, it gives a good message. And I could connect with it with Blaine. And he was just so sad and broken. I just wanted to hug Blaine out. Just, like, the whole fucking, the whole thing with his brother. And just, like, everybody, nobody agrees with him. No one, not even Kurt, you know, standing up for him. They're, he's just, like, you know, like, he doesn't want to deal with this shit. And I feel so bad. So, but that was my favorite scene of the whole episode because it was powerful. I think Darren did an amazing, amazing job of not just being biased because if I didn't watch Glee and I was just a blind watcher, I still would have thought that was amazing. Besides just the shower, the shower scene, the vocals, the whole thing, it kind of felt like a little bit of Rose's turn, a little bit, because it was like, you know, he's like powerful and you don't give a shit and he's going to sing his little heart out. Quinn and Artie have their own senior ditch day. Oh yeah, also, Quinn is also not the sponsor for no texting ever. Like, throw all your phones out, fuck this shit. Um, anyways, Quinn and Artie have their own senior ditch day, or as Artie likes to call it, Crip Skip, <laughs> at the skate park. And it goes into the song Up, Up, Up. And oh my god, this song is just so fun and cheery and cute and more quarty, and I'm just loving it a lot. I just want to keep it forever. Also, the other new directions um, at Six Flags, including Rory, Tina, and possibly Sugar, I don't know if she's a senior, or a junior, who aren't seniors and also already at the skate park, except no blame because he didn't want to come to bring everyone else down. But I don't get why the other students that aren't seniors were there. It doesn't make sense, but hey, it's clear it doesn't have to make sense, apparently. Um, Kurt and Rachel also with that red balloon in the beginning, I thought that was so adorable. Kurt's like booking it, like running. <laughs> just everybody was so cute. I just want to hold them all. Um, just had to mention that. They're on the roller coaster having so much fun. I'm just like, oh, I feel so adorable. I wish my senior skipped it. I was like, I did like nothing for my senior skip day. I just went home. <laughs> I don't think I even skipped, I don't even know. Um, Artie wants Quinn to get used to being in their wheelchair because she might never get out of it and never can walk again. He wants her to know that she can still live life and be happy in the wheelchair. But Quinn disagrees and gets angry. She knows that she'll get out of the chair and it's only temporary. She has to. She has to go to Yale and get out of Lima. I think Artie just wants a friend who can relate and knows what it's like to never get out of the chair. I think that's so sad because, you know, everyone sympathizes for Artie, but nobody knows how it feels. And now Quinn, you know, she kind of is starting and he's really happy. I feel like he's really happy, you know, he's in his element. He's showing someone else his element and how he lives life and how he can prove how happy he is. And 
Um, Joe helps Quinn out and introduces him to the New Directions. Finally, he's in the New Directions. Teen Jesus with twigs in his dreads. <laughs> and I kind of really don't want Joe and Quinn romance. I think Quinn needs to stay single for a while, especially if she's going to go to Yale. Just because it's near the end of senior year and just no more romance. It's just Quinn dependence right now. If not, either Quadi or for Barry, but I just kind of want her to stay with her own. Suf um, feels there's sexual tension between Mercedes and the Kentucky Fried Stripper. Kurt poops <laughs> rainbow glitter, but Sue wants to help them go to nationals in Chicago and wants Will to have at least one adult friend. Peter Will is canon, let me tell you. Um, <laughs> so this is one of the cutest moments in the episode. Kurt scares Blaine at his locker with the stuffed Margaret Thatcher dog with a British accent, and Kurt gives <laughs> gives him the stuffed dog because he doesn't. He felt bad and really. And Blaine was enough to go to the amusement park with the group. Kurt understands that fighting with his brother thing also mentions a Furt brotherhood, which is just sheer perfection because that's one of my favorite friendships on the show. Kurt tells Blaine that Cooper hasn't left yet and tells him he needs to express how he feels in the best way he knows possible, which is singing about it, going to somebody that I used to know. I watched this scene like a million times before the episode, so when the actual episode came around, I didn't really care because I've seen it a hundred million times. Um, both their voice voices are wonderful. Matt sounded great. Darren sounded great. Their voices really blend well together. The tension of both of them was really real and emotional. Poor little Blaine again and sad now adult Blaine. Um, Cooper compliments him at the end and apologizes for being a little motherfucking dick. I did that little part. Um, <laughs> but he sees how talented Blaine really is and how successful he'll be someday. Blaine knows he means it too because he wasn't pointing or speaking really loudly to be intense. Cooper wants to not only be brothers but friends and they hug it out. The Anderson brothers are very, very cute. Blaine wants to help Cooper since he didn't get the role in the movie that they'll go make an audition tape for Michael Bay. Okay, I'm going to link you in the description below the audition behind the scenes tape um, that Matt and Darren improvised. Which I think their, their chemistry as... Uh, Brothers is really wonderful also. I'm just gonna mention that so their audition tape for Transformers Here comes the Decepticons. Decepticons where? Over there 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 it's Megatron pew, pew, pew. Ah! <laughs> I know like the <laughs> Just go watch I'll put a link in the description below where you can watch the video yourself um Matt Bomer is like the best gar Glee star ever. I just think he needs to be on there forever. He is perfection. He made the season feel very much like season one, and I love that. Also, um, let's talk about Rachel and Finn quickly. They argue about New York, California. I think Rachel's being selfish. I don't see why Finn can't live out his dreams too. Why can't he be happy and go where he wants? Maybe the sign that they have to go their separate ways. Um, I think that it's very important that Finn is... I think Finn is... Finn is fit. Finn. Finn is very supportive of Rachel and her dreams. I think that's amazing quality about Finn. But Rachel doesn't see that maybe Finn wants dreams too. Maybe he wants to pursue his life as well. And she's not thinking about him. She's only really thinking about her dreams. And what about, you know, if you're going to get married, you have to think equally. You have to share and compromise. And sometimes if you want to go several parts of the country, it's not going to work out. And Maybe sometimes you'll find each other at some point in the future. Maybe it's just not meant to be at the moment. Maybe it's fate telling you it's not going to work. I think in the end, I swear to God, if Finn picks Rachel for with New York, I'm just going to slap somebody because I think Finn deserves a dream too. Why doesn't he get to be happy? Why doesn't he get to live out his dreams because of Rachel? And I'm not saying Rachel should move to California either. I just don't see why it's all about Rachel. You know, it's not... It's not just Rachel getting married to Finn, it's them coming together as a couple and so maybe it was good that they postponed the wedding because they never really thought about this. So next week is dis Disco, which is really stupid, but hey, you know what? They run out of ideas. So I'm really looking forward to some cute clan scenes with polyester suits and dancing and yes, apparently Kurt dips Blaine like dancing and it's adorable and I just want to snuggle them forever. So tell me your thoughts on uh, the episode and I will talk to you guys later and thank you for watching subscribing and I'll see you next week for episode 16.